thing I demonstrated on the wheel here, you could coil build the same design. I'm not necessarily, well I am demonstrating the technique because there are tricks to wheel throwing these. But however you build it, if you meet these design requirements, your piece will work. And I'm going to talk about what makes a lid work, what makes a spout work, um, later what makes a handle work. Well, you kind of already understand handles, right? We've dealt with them. Spouts are new. Lids are new. So, I'm going to start with a body. A teapot body. I'm wondering, is this too much for you? No. Um, Alright, so there's two different um, designs that I want to show as a, as a functional design. One is this kind of wide bottom, narrow top. It could be kind of a cone shape, it could be kind of a dome shape. <coughs> it's kind of short and compact. The leaning in walls, the, the cone shape or the dome shape is nice because it creates a lot of shoulder space where you can attach a spout and you can attach a handle. Either the handle is on the side or it could even come over the top. So that makes sense. The other design was that round kind of spherical shape. That's trickier. Uh, I am going to demonstrate it. Um, I'm actually going to demonstrate both. But um, I will warn you that this ball shape, this spherical shape, is the most difficult thing you'll make on the wheel. And you don't have to do this. It's an option. It's a combination, or it's a variation, of the constant curve hemisphere. Except it's a constant curve sphere. How many of you thought the constant curve hemisphere was tricky? Double that. Now, what's a shortcut to that? Who's thinking, what's the easy way to do this? I know how to make a hemisphere. Zach, make two of them. Put them together, score and slip. I got a sphere, right? Okay, so that's creative thinking is allowed. Should it be? Where's that cheating? Wait, what class are we in? So okay, um, I am throwing this with a with a flat bottom because I don't want to have to trim this. I could. But trimming it, that spherical shape, just adds to my headache in making this thing. So I got my flat bottom, and here's where I'm going to start a pole that's in that curved line. Um, I'm also going to actually pull in the lip a little bit right here. And I'm going to do a huge squeeze out on the outside. And now pull in a curved line. Right about here, I do a rollover and come back in. So it's like constant curve, roll over, and then back in. Um, I'm going to keep the lip really fat because I'm going to groove the lip like I did over here. And I'll tell you why in a second. That was pull number one. Here comes pull number two from the bottom. And up the wall I go. Outside hand joins in, roll over, moving back in. I'm kind of going up like a cylinder here, but trying to keep it going in. And I need it tighter, so I'm going to pull it in a little bit, or I mean collar it in a little bit, but not too much because I still need to get my hand in there. And I'm going to make sure I keep the lip fat. Okay. It's not really a sphere right now though, right? Let's try to get it more spherical in this pole. So wider in this section. Back up the shoulder. And now I'm going to really be careful because this is kind of a weak shape now. Collar a little bit. I got some water in the bottom. I'm going to make sure I get that out before I close this up anymore and I can't fit my hand in. <laughs> That's funny. This is so entertained when I mess up. Seriously, why is that funny? <laughs> you 
you guys ever watch um, Monty Python movies? Yeah. <laughs> Did I talk about this before? No. There's a great scene that's in a boarding school, English boarding school. It's, you guys know what rugby is? Yeah. It's a very rough sport. Yeah. Lots of hard hitting and tackling. It's like soccer and hockey and football and all the most violent aspects of those sports put into one. And they have this, it's a boarding school where it's, it's the boys or the students, it's all boys, and the staff, and it's the faculty versus staff rugby match. And it's not like big high school kids, it's like 12 year old boys, and the staff is just like, just running over these kids. And the end of the scene is just this field of like injured children. <laughs> That's not funny. <laughs> All right, so did you watch what I did, hopefully? Yes. Um, I just rounded that out. Um, the lip. The lip is not done. I need to get a groove in that lip. Groove the lip. All right, here's how to do that. I've kept it fat. I actually kind of started it here with my finger. But I'm going to get in with this modeling tool. And here's the secret. You've got to gently hold the lip with my left hand fingers and I'm going to take the modeling tool and on the inner edge start pushing down to create that groove and the groove has two parts now you've got a shelf and a wall that's the shelf and that's the wall the shelf is where the lid sits the wall is what keeps the lid from shifting back and forth okay you've got to have a wall that the lid sinks into. Um, all right, so what's the secret to doing this? First of all, was this my first try? Yeah. It's my first try this period, but this is like my 10,000th try of making this lip. You're not gonna get it on your first try. Um, here's how to get it. You need a very stable lip. It's gotta be on center, you can't be off center. It's got to be thick to start with. See how it got thinner? I had to have clay to separate to get those uh, two parts, the shelf and the wall. Um, and then again, this spherical shape is the toughest shape there is, but I wanted to do it so it's on video. Um, I'll show you, you guys want to see how to do this one? Much easier. You're good? I'll have that on video later too. But you can see, it's a cylinder with the walls leaning in. Super easy, okay? It's a big rollover. And then we stopped and fattened the lip. Okay, but this is the tricky one. You don't have to do this, but it does work really well. All right. Spouts? You guys want to see spouts? Yes. Do we have to make it that big? Um, I am not giving a size requirement. I'm not giving a size requirement. Um, but I will tell you, a T for two, don't go smaller than that. It's, that gets difficult. What? Really small is very difficult. Really big is very difficult. Uh, average size is, average. it works well. Is that average size or is that big? Uh, well, it's going to shrink. That's, I'd say that's an average size. Something that you could have. Tea with two people. At least. Tea for two. Okay. Tea for one? It's kind of depressing. Tea All right, so let's get on to... Spouts and lids. Sorry. Spouts and lids are going to throw off the hump. Anybody wondering what that means? Yeah. Anybody you have any guesses what that's going to mean or what that's going to look like? Throwing it off the hump. Is that going to mean it? Attach a potter's wheel to a camel. It's a hump. <laughs> or I only throw them Thursday or Friday. Off the hump. Wednesday, the hump. Any other hump jokes? Maybe we should. Okay, there's the hump. That's the hump. And when I need to throw little things, especially lots of little things. 
Uh, this is a technique that potters use all the time. You're making a lot of one thing or a lot of little things. We'll center one big chunk of clay or even roughly centered. It doesn't even have to be all the way centered. And then I'm going to center a little piece of clay on top of that. Now this is the clay I'm going to throw. That I'm going to pretend that isn't there right now. Okay? It's a cute little ball of clay. So, what am I going to make? A spout. Actually, maybe I need more clay. Should I make a lid first? Let's make a lid. Um, I want to talk about three different kinds of lids. We have the inverted bowl, we have the sunken knob, and we have the mushroom cap. Let's start with the inverted bowl, because that's the easiest and the most recent in your memory. How do you make a low profile constant curve bowl? Super easy. Here we go. It's just going to be real small. So I'm going to open two thumbs, big squeeze, dig, pull, dig, pull, watch the lip, don't let it get too thin. <clears throat> How am I going to make sure this fits? Guess. Any ideas? Should I just guess? Yeah. Just eyeball it? Eyeball it. You think I can eyeball it like right to the money? I yes. think So, these are calipers. And what am I doing right now? Measuring. Measuring the inner dimension of the wall on the lip, the inside of the wall. So that is the same as this. This is for measuring the inside. This is for measuring the outside of something. Oh, it's too big. Okay, so this is too big. I'm gonna cut it down. I could use a needle, but I like the wire. Um, it's, it's real easy, but if you screw it up, you screw it up. I'm going to go in and then out real fast. Ready? Set. In. Oh, I didn't even go up. <laughs> Still need to take a little more off. What if I take too much off? You're done. Pull it out again. You're done. Let's go back into the hump and pull out more clay, right? Now this throwing off the hump wasn't my idea. I hate to take, I wish I could take credit. Potter's been doing this for thousands of years. Back in the day, if you were a student, you didn't take a class with 39 other kids. There was one of you, there was one teacher, and for the first five years of your training, you laid on your side and ran to kick the wheel around in circles, and then swept up. And the potter probably called you names a lot too. Made fun of you. It's called an apprenticeship. Actually, I still do it. It's not as brutal anymore, but. All right, let's check this. So it's just a constant curve bowl, you guys. You've done this. Almost there. Have you seen uh, Karate Kid? The Karate Kid? Mr. Miyagi? And Danielson? Do you remember when Mr. Miyagi is teaching Danielson to wax his car? Yeah. Wax on, wax on. Remember when he said to paint the fence? And Danielson's in the backyard, he's like, ah, what am I doing? I should be out there. I should be going to the other dojo and learning how to actually fight. And, and then he wants to actually pick a fight with old man Mr. Miyagi. And he's like, wax on, wax off. Paint through it. And all of a sudden he's like, oh crap, I know how to karate fight. I didn't even realize I was learning it. <clears throat> so all this stuff you guys have been doing in this class up to now is training for making this teapot. Are you Mr. Miyagi, Mr. Miyagi? Would that blow your mind? <laughs> if I was a very short Asian man <laughs> in, my, in my late 70s? And all this time you thought I was just some um, White guy. <laughs> 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 
Do you see this is the size I need? Yeah. See that? That's perfect. Now listen. How perfect does it need to be? Pretty perfect. Perfect is perfect. Perfect is perfect. Um, too small and it rattles. But it still goes on. Uh, too small, it'll rattle in here. If it's way too small, it'll fall in. That's way too small. But if it's too big, it's a complete failure. Too small, there's a little forgiveness. Too, a little too big, complete failure because it won't fit in the walls. mess up on the top, we get an F in the class. Yes. I ain't done yet, son. I ain't Oh, you gotta do. Make the teapots. It's not like you have to win the big karate match. You do. Against the, what are the bad guys called? The dragon dojo or something. <laughs> Alright, hey, there was one lid. That's the inverted bowl. Now later, when that's leather hard, I'll turn it over, I'll trim it round, and I'll throw a separate knob, or I'll handle the a knob. What shape does that knob need to be to work as a knob? A U. It can be any shape, you guys. As long as you can grab it, it's, it can work as a knob. <laughs> Unless you're making a teapot for your enemies. In which case you'd want it to be dangerous. Okay, next lid, next lid. This is the sunken knob. Again, I'm throwing off the hump. So this is my, I'm gonna same, same teapot, same measurements, different lid design. Some of you are watching. Most of you are, some of you are not. Sunken knob, picture this. It, that's it, Never mind. you don't have to picture it. There it is, that's what I'm gonna make. And the central feature is that knob in the middle, right? And I throw it right side up. I'm not throwing it upside down like I did the bowl. So, I'm not gonna open this clay in the middle, right? Because that's the knob. That is the knob right there. That's the beginning of the knob. This is where I'm gonna open. And I might just take one finger and two hands and elbows down and hold real still to make sure I get that groove in the right place. And then I could be a little bit more aggressive with it. This again, it'll take you a few tries. So this is my knob. Now can I shape the knob? Give it a little squeeze, a little skinny. What looks good? What looks good on that pot? What if I made just a round knob to echo the round shape of the body? That makes sense, doesn't it? How many of you are really excited to make a knob for your lid? Okay, hold on. <clears throat> now I've got this little piece down here. This is like a bowl. It's like a bowl with a, nod in, a knob in the middle. <coughs> so I'm going to pinch and pull up like a bowl. And I can tell already I've probably got, well, do I, do I more play than I need? <clears throat> it needs to be wider. <clears throat> so I'm going to I'm going to take this finger right here and I'm just going to pinch and fold it out. Now let's check the size. A little loose. I'm going to dig down a little more. Get a little more out of the middle. Pull it up. Is your hand getting tired, Denise? Not really. Does it hurt your eyes after a while? Not really. Yeah. Okay, just brought it in a little. There I am. That's where I want it. Okay, so let's get ready to take this off. I have some water in there. I'm going to try to get it out without messing up my knob. I'm going to break it off. Centered now. <laughs> okay, I need a little bit more extra space on here to push the hump down a little bit. And I'm trying to make sure I see where the bottom of this is 
and where the point of the modeling tool is to make sure I don't cut no. the clay away. And this I can trim later, but if I get it cut perfectly, I won't need to. Oh, I forgot to measure it one last time. I like to always measure it one last time before I take it off. It's a millimeter too wide. I should have measured it. A millimeter makes it, that, and not too wide, that's the deal breaker, right? Push it in just a millimeter. Oh, teapot, why do you mock me? This is a good lesson, good demo. See, it's not going to be easy. Get it right, get it right. Take the time to get it right. Aha! Uh -huh. Where are you now, Lid? <laughs> going to go to your home. Going to go where you belong. Into the pot. So this will fit. I'm not going to put it on, but you see how it's going to fit right in there? The other thing you need to pay attention to is how wide this is right here. That's got to be narrow enough to fit through the opening. But that you can eyeball. You don't need calipers to figure that out. Okay, spouts. Spouts, okay, spouts, super easy. Just like a cylinder. One key trick. Make them the right shape. So, off the hump again. You watching? I've seen this one before. I can do it without looking, JJ. All right, you good. I'm opening a wide <laughs> cylinder. I'm doing a big rollover, JJ. <laughs> and now I'm going to pull up and in. If you're doing it right, your hands can be your eyes, right? Collaring it, pulling it. Are you watching? Are you watching the clay, JJ? I'm watching your eyes to see if you're watching what my hands are doing. So here's the secret, guys. <laughs> you want the base to be nice and wide and it to quickly taper to narrow. And this opening right here should be about one fifth of this down here. Is it? Yeah. Check. Right. One, one, two, three, four, five, uh, a little narrower. Okay. I'm feeling like it might be a little too long. Um, a needle. I don't have my needle with me. Put my finger in here, push the needle through, it'll come right off. I'm just going to use my fingernail. Um, okay, so I cannot emphasize this enough. The mistake every beginner makes on their first spout is, not every, I'm generalizing, almost all, 98% of all beginners, their first spout, they make the base too narrow. See how wide that is? This is the bottom of the spout. I'm not going to put all that on the pot. I might even cut some of this down. I can do that later. In fact, what this is, what I'm going to attach to the pot is going to be something like that. See, all this I'll cut off, but I need all this to get that. Does that make sense? Yes. yes. Okay. It's not. I'll get it perfect later. This part two of this demo is how to put all this together. Today I'm just making the parts. Um, okay, how do I take this off? Let's get the groove. Did I talk about this? The groove is important. Use the point of the modeling tool to put the groove in there. And that guides the wire. I don't know how to space. You are a chum 
very smart kid, Julia. Thanks. <laughs> and I can give this some curve. Just a little. Um, but not, you know, we think about to those teapots that you guys made. I'm not done. Not done. Those teapots that you made, um, <coughs> not that you made, that you looked at, that you presented, some of them had some very lyrical curvilinear spouts. I mean, maybe almost a complete S curve for the spout, right? No. Hear any sirens though? S curve. <clears throat> a spout with an S curve cannot be thrown. Some of the pots that you guys presented had pulled spouts. Pulled spouts. Think about it. You know how to pull what? What have you pulled so far this year? Handles. Handles. Okay, remember? Mr. Miyagi, Danielson, the backyard, waxing the cars. While you were learning how to pull handles, you are also learning how to pull spouts. Who's got a question mark over their head right now? Mark, what are you wondering? Nino, what are you wondering? I'm wondering how do you make the spout hollow? Did everybody hear Nino's question? That's the question you should all be asking right now. I showed you how to pull handles, but how does a handle become a spout? Nino said, how does it, how does it get hollow? Right? Is that what you um, By the way, I'm just making a cylinder right now. I'm going to make a lid for this in a second. So listen to me talk about spouts for a second. Pulled spouts. If you were to pull a spout, again, it would need to be fat at the top, taper towards the bottom. You could curve it as much as you want, but it's still solid clay. How do you get that clay hollow? JJ, you got any ideas? Who's got an idea? I'm telling you, you can do it. There's a way to do it. Anyone? Carve it with your needle tool. Jonathan, got any ideas? Zach? Carve it with your needle tool. Carve it with your needle tool. Denise is guessing. Anybody got any other guesses? That might work. What else might work? Katie? Like, pull it down over something. Pull it down over something? and then pull that thing out, maybe? You have a negative space on the inside? That might work. Any other ideas? Nina, I mean Emilio, what are you, what are you trying to say? Say it out loud. You like, it in half, and then you can clean the inside, and then put it back together. That's how you do it. Say it again, Emilio. Real, real loud, Emilio. Put it in half, and then you clean the inside out, can you picture that, people? Genius. You know how they, they used to make canoes out of tree trunks? Cut the tree down, um, cut it in half, hollow out the two halves, you got two canoes, right? It's kind of the same thing. You, you, you take your spout, you let it get leather hard, you cut it down the middle, you split it out, you carve it out, carve the channel out, and score and slip it back together. You've got a hollow pulled spout. Does that make sense? Is it easy? No. Oh. no. <laughs> it's actually very difficult. But you can do it. OK, what am I doing? I'm making a cylinder that I'm going to make a lid for. And I want to show you this. <clears throat> Keep this humble. Okay, so there's my pot. Push up. You can undercut. This is a cylindrical pot with a straight lip. Okay, when I say a straight lip, that's a straight lip, that's a grooved lip. Straight, grooved. Um, I'm showing you this because these lids need that lip. There's another, you can do a straight lip, 
but it requires a different lid. In the end, I don't care how you design your lid. I'm showing you three very traditional designs for lids. When I say traditional, same reason we looked at those functional teapots. They look familiar. We've seen them before. They look like that, and you see a lot of that because it works well. Can I have one more board? Moises, can you pass one to Stalin, to Uber, to Rex, to Julia, to me? This one, I'm going to measure the inside. Give it a little wiggle room in there. Like a millimeter on each side. So that is the same as that. So if this fits around it, then it will fit in there. So I'm going to make the mushroom cap. That's this one. Yeah. Never mind, it's still too wet. I'm not going to mess with it. Mushroom cap. There's the cap, and the stem is on the inside. There's a stem that goes down. Sorry. Goes inside. <laughs> this lid is tricky to make. The lid is tricky, but the lip is easy. Some of you are going to really struggle with that lip. And you might want to explore this lid. Um, okay, so again, I'm going to throw off the hump. And this starts off just like a bowl. It is going to be an inverted form. I'm going to throw it inverted. Okay, let's say, say that's the clay I'm going to throw. Make a decent groove about a finger deep. See, that's about a finger deep, that groove. Now I'm going to open like it's a bowl. And I've already got this fat lip that already has a little bit of a groove in it. So like a constant curve, I dig and I pull, but leave the lip super, super fat. Don't touch the lip at all. So this lip, I'm gonna split into the cap and the stem. So here's the lip. Watch how I split it. Not everybody's watching, I'm watching your eyes. Looking for your eyes. We need to see if your eyes are looking at what I'm looking at. If you're hiding behind another person so I can't see you, I know you can't see what I'm doing. Okay, so my pinky finger right here is starting to split the lip. See the little groove I'm making? Now that it's split, I can take this inner wall, treat it like a cylinder, and squeeze and pull, and treat this kind of like a lip of a bowl, pinch it, shape it. Let's check the size, where am I at? Okay, this is the stem that goes inside. That will work, but it's going to be awful loose and rattly. I'm going to bring it out a little bit to make it a little bit of a better fit. Where's my sponge? Okay, this is the cap. It's upside down. I'm going to take it off, and it's going to go. We're going to invert it and put it on there. So let's check it again for size. Closer, but still a little loose. I'm going to get it pretty close, but not as tight as I would have gotten the bowl. And when I'm checking it, you see these walls taper in? I'm measuring at the fattest part of the wall. Okay, that's where I want it. That's perfect. Let me round this out. I want this to be round. Okay, the inverted bowl, when it's trimmed round and put on the pot, it needs a knob, right? Because otherwise I can't grab it. Its edge is inside the wall. I can't grab it. Unless I turn the whole pot upside down and let it fall out. In which case all my hot tea goes everywhere too. And that's a big mess. So I'm going to throw a knob, cut it off, let it dry, score and slip it onto the bowl after it's trimmed. Do you want me to demonstrate that or can you picture that? It's pretty easy. Um, this one we threw with the knob on it. Does this one need a knob? Yes. Does that need a knob? Yeah. Why not? I can grab it by the lip. In the end, if I can get the lid off, I'm doing what it needs to do. And it's a good rule to think about or keep in mind, there's not one way to do this. If the, if the goal is to get the tea in the pot, 
and then into the into the cup and you can do it you've accomplished the goal now I'm gonna say we are making a teapot it must have a spout it must have a handle it must have a lid and it must have a body those are necessary and sufficient components of teapots without any of those we can't call it a teapot I'm not saying it's not something I'm not saying it's not good it's just not a teapot um, so, your choices. Look at your handout, you guys. Did I demonstrate everything? Look at your handout. Thank you, Denise. 